Hey guys, welcome back. This is Pablo. I'll talk with you guys about problem from week five, thermodynamics, Mac 3001, uh, problem 4.35. Yeah, that's the first problem of the tutorial sheet. It says the following. Piston cylinder device initially contains 0.8 meters cubed of saturated water vapor at 250 kilopascals. At this stage, the piston is resting on the set of stops, and the mass of the piston is such that a pressure of 300 kilopascals is required to move it. Heat is now slowly transferred to the steam until the volume doubles. Show the process on a PV diagram with respect to saturation lines and determine the final temperature, how much work the water does on the piston, and the total heat transfer. Okay. This is a very good question. It's very, um, there's a lot of concepts in this question. It requires the person who's solving to really understand what's happening. So we're gonna do it in a lot of steps so that you guys can follow it properly, okay? So let's first talk about the situation that we have. So let me just draw this here. So we have a little piston here on top. And then we have two stops, I have a stop here, and we have a stop here. We're dealing with water, and inside we have 250 kilopascals, brilliant. And over here we have 300 kilopascals. Okay, we can, um, we're gonna start by drawing on the PV diagram, but to be able to do that we need to understand what's going to happen here. So this, at the moment, this is at rest. And note that we have 300 kilopascals over here and 250 over here. So that means that if we break this down, if I were to redraw this, thinking about the forces that are acting on the system, right? If we thought, think about a free body diagram. We have 300 kilopascals. Don't forget that pressure is just force or area, right? So it's a, we can think of it as a type of force. We have 250 on that direction there, okay? And if this were the only things in the system, this obviously would go down, right? Because if we sum up the forces, the resulting force will be downwards, and this piston will go down. And that's where the two stops come in. So we have this stop over here, we have another stop over here, so therefore that difference there, we the system is resting on the stop, so the difference there is that we have a 25 pressure being built here and a 25 pressure being built here, right? So this makes our system reach equilibrium, and therefore this guy is not going anywhere. So that's why it's important to have those two stops there. Okay, what's going to happen from now on? Well, the system is going to be heated, right? So we're going to be adding heat to this guy here. We get Q going in. As uh, Q is added to the system, since it cannot expand because we have this situation here, which the uh, pressure is greater on the top, what will happen is the pressure is going to increase, right? Since it cannot expand in volume, the pressure is going to increase. So we would expect, as we're giving heat to this guy, this pressure here to increase. And then it would increase all the way until it reaches 300, right? Because once this pressure here reaches 300, then there's an equilibrium of forces over here, and then this piston can move upwards, okay? So we would expect the pressure to rise all the way until we have a situation that's going to look like this, 300 kilopascals at the bottom, and then 300 kilopascals upwards, and note that now the two stops are irrelevant. So the purpose of the stops is just stop it from going downwards, but the stops are not on top as well, so this guy can move upwards, the piston can move upwards. Okay, once we reach this situation, we have another equilibrium, all right, so the pressure rolls here, let's put it like here, pressure over and up, and then we have this situation here. Now what's going to happen? Well, I'm still giving heat to my system, so I'm still giving energy to the system. So as I'm giving more energy, this pressure would like to go up, right? It will keep going up. But now what happens, as soon as it goes up a bit, right? As soon as it, let's redraw this. Right? So as soon as it goes, let's call this delta here. Let's just do the little delta there. As soon as it goes this amount, as soon as the pressure goes up a bit, and now the force is greater this side than it is to this side, right? 
that we have in the note. Let's put 301 just to make things simple, right? And we have 300 down. So it will go that way. But as soon as it goes that way, what happens? It expands in volume, right? Because if we're going that way, the water in here is expanding in volume. And as we know, as we know, as you probably know by now, pressure and volume are inversely proportional to each other, right? So if my volume is expanding, pressure decreases. So the moment that this guy goes up, the piston goes up, right, this moment here, as soon as we have that delta, that movement there, the volume has increased, so therefore our pressure decreases and it goes back to 300. And then we have equilibrium again, right? So now we have a new state of equilibrium, but now our V, let's call this V star, the V star now is greater than our V1 initial, right? And that's going to continue to happen, because as we give more energy, the pressure wants to increase again, but then it expands in volume, and then pressure decreases. And that keeps going on, so what we're going to have is that it's a pro process at constant pressure, because the pressure can never change. As soon as it tries to change, the volume changes, in there, but our volume is changing, right? So that's the overall scenario. So note that we're going to have three states here. State one, before anything happens. Then state two, after the pressures are equal. And then state three, after the heat stop to... Uh, uh, heat stops to go into our system and then we have the final equilibrium with whatever volume we have and we know that's double, right? Um, heat goes and slowly transferred to the steam until the volume doubles, all right? And the reason why they say it's slowly given to the, to the steam is exactly because of this. If they give it a lot, then we're going to have an increase in pressure and volume at the same time. If they give it in small increments, as soon as the pressure tries to rise, the volume expands, the pressure goes back again, right? So then we have a constant process, uh, constant pressure process. Okay, so let's draw that on the PV diagram. So pressure here, specific volume over here. We have, as per usual, saturation line there, or a dome, sorry. And um, we are, where are we? Saturated water vapor. So we start somewhere here, right? Anywhere that you guys want to start over here, okay? And we know our original pressure is 250, so this will be 250 kilopascals there. Cool? Brilliant. So what's the first thing? So this is state one. This one, state one. Okay, so what's going to happen now? We're going to give energy so that the pressure increases, but there's no change in volume, right? Because it can only change volume once it reaches a 300. So no change in volume has to stay in this line, and we're increasing pressure, so we need to go upwards. Okay, and we're going to go upwards until when? Well, we're going to go upwards until our line reaches 300. We know that when it reaches 300 now, it can expand in volume, right? So this right here, this point here, is our state too. And then, and then what happens? Then our pressure cannot change anymore. It tries to, but it can't change because we're doing small increments of heat. But our volume is expanding, right? Our total volume inside of water, of vapor, is expanding, and it's going this way. So our final state, state 3, is over there. Okay, so we drew the uh, PV diagram already. All right, so let's, now let's start doing some math. The only thing that I know is going to be constant throughout this whole process is the mass, right? The mass will not change regardless of these state properties here. There's no water going in or out of the system. So if I can find the mass, I know that's going to be one thing that's going to be constant throughout the whole process. And we can find the mass because V1 has been given and it's Oops, it is cubed. And our specific volume we can find out, right, on the first state, because we have two we have two um, state properties in the beginning. So we can find our our specific volume. And with the specific volume we can find the specific volume from the saturated vapor. Set vapor at uh, 250. We can combine these two things to find the mass. Alright? So that's before we actually calculate the mass, let's write down what we know. State 1. We know state 1 is a saturated vapor. We know pressure 1 is 250 kilopascals. I think that's about it. About it. Yeah, that's about it. All right, what else? State 2. What do we know about state 2? We know pressure on state 2, right? Because we know that has to be 300 kilopascals. And do we know anything else about state 2? Yeah, we do, because the volume does not change, right? So, specific volume 2 equals specific volume 1, okay? Which, by the way, we already 
talk about it. It's the saturating vapor at 250, right? It's this guy here. All right, what about state three? State three, what do we know about state three? We know the pressure, right? Because P3 equals P2, which is 300 kilopascals. Yeah, you can look on the uh, PV diagram to make sure. What else do we know about state three? I think that's about it for now, at least, for state three. Mm, oh no, we know something else, right? We know the volume, so V3, let's call it equals two times V1. Yeah? Because we're going to stay, we're going to give energy, we're going to be heating this state all the way until it doubles in volume. So all the way until it doubles in volume. So this is going to be two times V1 and V1. You can put V1 here if you want to, which is 0.8. And V1 is 0.8, so V3 is going to be 1.6 meters cubed. Okay? And obviously we can still put if you want to put V2 here, you can. V2 equals V1, which is 0.8. It's not going to be much of much help, but we can do that. All right. Brilliant. So that's the, the things we need to know so we can solve this problem. Okay, so let's start with calculating the mass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the water um, saturated mixture, right? And I'm going to look on the saturated vapor at 250 on the pressure table. And I'll grab my specific volume. Let me just see what I have here. The specific volume is 0 0.718.73 meters cubed per kilogram. Okay, and since I'm here on the table, I'll go ahead and grab my um, internal energy. Because as you can imagine, I'm going to end up using internal energy to determine the heat afterwards. My internal energy of my state one is 2536.8 kilojoules per kilogram. Great. Uh, if you want to, you can grab your initial temperature. Don't really have to, but to make things easier in your mind to see, that might be useful. Okay. All right. Now that we have a specific volume one and we have the volume one, uh, it becomes trivial because specific volume is the volume over the mass. So the mass will be the volume divided by the specific volume. And in this case, our mass will be, uh, volume is 0.8 meters cubed. Specific volume is 0.71873 meters cubed per kilogram. And this will render 1.113 kilograms, right? All right, cool. Uh, let me pause and change pages. Okay, let's move on. So we know the mass already. Now what we can do is we can find out some more information about state three. Why do we want that? Because first question is, what's the temperature T3? Right? And what do we know about T3? Well. From our PV diagram, we know the third state is a superheated fluid. Yeah, we know that already because we started here, we went upwards and to the right. So it can only be a superheated fluid. But let's make sure, right? Let's pretend we didn't go that far on our um, trail of thought so we can make the um, decision clear. So what we know about the state three, we know the pressure, right? Remember the pressure is the same as second state. And we notice the, the volume, right? We know the volume is 1.6 meters cubed. All right, if we know the volume and we know the mass didn't change, the uh, delta M is zero, let's put it that way, the mass didn't change, right? There's no water going in or out. Well, the specific volume is, we can find it, right? It's going to be V3 divided by the mass, okay? Or if you want to, if you want to go further, you can think that it's two times the specific volume one. Why? Because it's two times this, and this is the same, right? So you can do either way. It's going to be the same thing. So let's do it. And this is going to be 1.6 divided by the 1.1113 that we found for the mass, which is going to give me a specific volume of 1.44 meters cubed per kilogram. Okay? 
So note now that we have, thankfully, two information from state three. We have specific volume and we have pressure. We have two things. We define the whole state, right? And now what we can do is we can go to the same table, the water um, mixture table, the saturated mixture table, and we can see that our V3 is greater than the saturated vapor for at pressure of 300 kilopascals. Okay, this guy here is uh, 0 0.6. So this guy here, let's do it this way. This guy here is 0 0.605 something. And our guy is 1.4, right? So it's way greater. So therefore, so therefore, our state three is a superheated fluid. Yeah, well, we knew that already, right, from the diagram, but now we were uh, super sure about that. No doubts in our mind. Okay, next question. Uh, sorry, not, not, not next question. Um, still this question. We need to find out the temperature, right? So what we do we need to, in this case, we're going to have to either interpolate or extrapolate. If you look, we're going to have to go to our, um, let me change colors. So now we have to go to the superheated table, new table. We're going to look at the superheated table at uh, 300 kilopascals, which is 0.3 megapascals. And we're going to have to find a specific volume of 1.44. Okay. We're looking for the temperature, right? So what we're going to do here is the temperature is on this side. This is my table. And my specific volume is on this side. Right? This is from the table. And you'll see, by looking from the table, that our value, 1.44, falls between 600 Celsius and 700 Celsius. Okay. The value for 600 is 1.34139, and the value for the 700 is 1.4958. Okay, and this is news cube per kilogram. So what we do now is we can interpolate. Okay, you can use your calculator, you can do it by hand, up to you, it's a linear regression. If you guys have still questions on how to do this with your calculator, or if you're still not sure, Leave me a comment and I'll do a video on it for you guys. All right, cool. So now we're going to interpolate between these two values and these two guys for our 1.4. And this is going to give us that the temperature T3 is 663, about 0.8 Celsius. All right, so that's part eight. Temperature of the final state, that's 663. All right. That makes sense, it does, right? It's closer to 1.44 is closer to 1.49 than to 1.33. So it makes sense that it's going to be above 650, which is right the midpoint between the two. Okay, next part of the question. We need the, how much work does the water do on the piston? Okay. So remember this guy? We're going to give energy all the way until the water can expand, right? So when it's expanding, it's doing work on the piston to be able to expand, right? It needs to use that energy in the form of work to be able to expand. We can calculate that because we know that work, right? Force times distance, or as we talked about in the previous video, the volume times the pressure, right? Over a change, right? This is over a change and then this is over the change. Since we can look at this different ways, right? On the first process, in which let's put it this way, um, no, I know, from state one to state two, delta V equals zero. Therefore, work equals zero, right? From state one to state two, that's where the pressure is increasing, right? That's where the our pressure is going up, but our volume does not change because of that piston that has a 300 over there. So if there's no change in volume, there's no work, right? Now, from state two, to state three, well now our pressure is constant, but our volume does change, right? So therefore our work will be proportional, it's actually the integral of PV respect to V1 to V3, but in this case, there's no change in pressure, pressure is constant, right, from this pressure here. Uh, let's put it here, P is constant, so this guy becomes P integral of VV, and then this is just going to be the change 
So delta V, right? So our work for state two, so state three is going to be P delta V, and we have all that information, right? We have the pressure at which this transformation occurs, constant pressure, which is 300 kilopascals, and the change in volume we also have because we're going from one. Actually, we end up as 1.6, and we're coming from 0.8. We're doubling, right? Um, units, newtons over meters squared, meters cubed, so that's going to go away. It's going to be newtons times meters, so that's joules. Kilo, kilojoules, okay? So work um, equals 240 kilojoules, right? And that is our second part of the question. Right, so how much work, this is the amount of energy in the form of work that our piston or our water had to give to be able to expand, right? Had to use to be able to expand, not give, right? To be able to push that piston away, upwards. Okay, I'll pause again so we can do the last part, last bit. All right, so last bit, we're doing part C now. And we're after the total heat transfer, right? So if you guys recall, how did this happen? We started over here, we gave energy, heat, 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 kept giving heat, 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 and then we stopped giving heat over here, right? That's what changed in our process. And that's related to state one, in which we had the two rests there, then state, and then we had 300 here and 250 here. And then state two, at which point we had 300 on both. And then state three, at which point we had an expansion. Let's make it bigger here. And now this is the 300, 300. But now this volume just doubled. This is now 1.6, right? So that's, these are the, the changes that occurred. Now, throughout this whole process, Heat is being given, right? Heat is first used to increase the pressure, and then heat is used to increase the volume, right? So this change here, to be, to be able to do this change, we need two things, right? We need heat to be able to give energy enough for the guy to do the work that it needs. Oops, sorry, work is over here. To do the work that it needs to expand, and also energy enough to go to increase the pressure. So what we know is that there will be a change in internal energy through this guy, right? Now it's, it has more volume and it's a, a different pressure. And we know that the first law of thermodynamics tells us that we cannot create or destroy energy, right? So therefore, the amount of heat that I need to give needs to be enough for that water to expand, and also has to be enough to justify the change in internal energy of this system, okay? So on state three, if I go to my table, same place as before, I already interpolated, right, for the temperature. And what I need to do now is interpolate once again to find my internal energy, E3. Right, so we can do it either way. You can do with the specific volume as you did before, or we can use the temperature now that you know the temperature. It's up to you. Right, all we know is going to be between the 600 and the 700. And our internal energy on the table will be 33301, straight from the table, right? And 34. 79.5 minus is kilojoules per kilogram. So again, we do interpolation, and when we do that interpolation for what is it? 663.8 Celsius. This interpolation renders a value of 3415.1, is it? Yeah, 0.1 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay? Okay, so remember that we grabbed the U1. I mean, we actually, I actually still have it here. We grabbed the U1, so we have the internal energy on in the initial state. And now, by the way, in U, our U3 needs to be greater, right? So if you did not get a greater... Hey guys, apologies for that. I ran out of space on my memory card. So we were just talking about how our new value for U has to be greater than our initial one, right? Because we have a state of higher energy. And indeed it is, right? So it's uh, almost uh, 3,400 versus 
2500. Okay, so that makes sense. Good. And this is our delta u, right? Delta u goes from here to here. Our final state minus our initial state. That's one of the beauties of thermodynamics because you, you don't need to know what's the u for the second state. And even if we have, I don't know, 10 states, as long as you know the first one and the last one, you can know the difference in internal energy after this whole process. All right, so let's do this. Delta U is U3, our final state, minus U1. Delta U is, uh, this is uh, small caps. If I want uppercase, I'm going to have U3 times the mass right, of our process. And we have these values, so uppercase delta U will be 34, 15.1 minus 25, 36.8 kilojoules per kilogram times our mass. We found the mass before, and that's 1.113. Right, so this is kilojoules per kilograms times kilograms. That's still kilojoules. Right? Uppercase delta U equals 177.5. Kilojoules. Okay, mind you that if I forget to multiply by the mass, if I get lowercase u, okay, it's fine, but you cannot use it on this equation straight off, right? Because work has been given in kilojoules, calculated in kilojoules, not kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, and the amount of heat, amount of total heat, we also want it in kilojoules, so we need this guy in kilojoules. All right, so last but not least, C calculate the amount of heat required for this change. Well, the amount of heat for this change will be the amount of energy we need to give for the work to be to occur and the amount of energy to change from one state to the other, right? So Q will be equal to W plus this change in energy. And note, again, if you guys just use this equation trade off, you're going to uh, subtract the work, but the work is needed Right, the work the system needs the work to be able to expand, so it has to be provided by Q, right, by the heat in the form of energy through heat. Okay, so that's very, why it's very important for you guys to understand what's going on, and to understand that this equation is telling you that energy cannot be created or destroyed. If you take this guy to be always positive or always negative like that, you're gonna get confused. You need to understand what's happening. Okay, so our Q in this case will be uh, the energy needed to change from one state to the other in kilojoules and the work that we calculated before and it's 240. All right? So therefore the amount of heat that we need to give to the system is 1217.5 kilojoules. Okay? This is the final answer for part C. Oh, sorry. Misjudged my space. Okay? So this is the final answer for part C. And it means that if we want to go from this state, this original state here, oops, this original state here, all the way to this original, to this final state here, you, on, a, on a situation in which we have those stops and it's the difference in pressure is 50 kilopascals and so forth, we need to give this amount of energy to our system, right? This amount of energy is going to correspond to the amount of energy it needs to go from state one to state three in terms of internal energy, plus the energy it needs to be able to expand from its original volume to uh, twice its volume, okay?